Would you like to earn Penia even as we speak, without even lifting a finger? Doing as little as leaving a shop behind can generate you millions of Penia, and especially so if you can take advantage of the market around you. Vending your trash that could be someone else's treasure is practically free money, but you can take that a step further with a little knowledge and turn simple shopkeeping into a profitable business with a talent called merchanting. Hey, what's up guys? It's Manalus, and today I'm going to run you through a lesson in business school, which I never went to myself. Consider it a geographic opportunity by yours truly, it's free knowledge. And perhaps by the end of this, you'll have what it takes to be a dirty capitalist like me. Let's get started. Before we go any further, let me start off with a definition. What exactly is merchanting? I'm sure that many of you are aware of the slogan buy low and sell high, and that's pretty much what merchanting is all about. On top of pricing your own products properly, you want to take advantage of changes and anomalies in the market and turn them in your favor as you keep increasing your own wealth. When done properly, just taking a couple of minutes to set up a vendor as you go on about your day or leaving your character AFK overnight can make quite a profit. Checking through the shops regularly can be time consuming though, so the earnings don't come that easily. Some effort, cunning and perhaps a little bit of luck is needed to make this intricate craft successful and you'll have to be ready to take some risks. If this isn't your kind of thing, consider yourself warned if you want to continue further in this video. When getting started with merchanting, the first thing you have to do is learn the market. Flife Universe is a game with an open market system, which means that individual shops are managed by players and they get to decide the prices for their items without any price guidelines. This makes items more prone to market fluctuations as the value of items is just about anybody's guess and the prices may shift as time goes on. You should take the time to look around the shops that other players leave behind to understand what the currently perceived value is for items being sold. Mind you that markets between servers can vary a lot, so any prices from other servers might not apply to yours. And, if you've been watching my leveling series and expect to get the same prices somewhere else than in Totemia, then you're likely going to be disappointed. So be a good boy or girl and do your homework, alright? So you won't get angry giraffes under your bed at night. People may have different understandings of value depending on how much they pay attention to the market and how much profit is enough for them. Some may not care about the market at all and price their items based on gut feeling, and some may even make a mistake when pricing their products. That's where the fun and opportunity of merchanting comes in. When you're involved enough with the market to know for sure that something's worth a lot more than what they're being sold for, then it's time to make a move. SCAM THE HELL OUT OF THE PLAYER! Once you've got a stock of items that you want to sell, whether you collected it yourself or bought from elsewhere in the market, it's time to set up a shop. Depending on what you're selling though, the location of the shop tends to matter as people who are looking for a certain thing aren't often going to look through the whole town to find what they seek. Therefore, it's important to consider what kind of items you want to put up for sale and then decide upon a venue where you want to leave your shop in. There's no obvious location to put your shop up in for everything, but sticking to where the item would be the most convenient to have tends to be the most reliable way to have your item discovered. This could mean things like upgrading scrolls and materials next to the upgrading vendors, race and sacrificial pets around Pet Tamer, and quest items in front of the quest office. At least in Totemia, there's also certain parts of town which tend to sell specific types of items such as piercing cards, weapons and premiums, and paying attention to these details when making your market research can help with considering your shop placement. Setting your shop in a popular spot usually means that there's more competition, but it's far better than people missing your shop entirely, unless you're really patient. Once you've decided on where you want to set up your shop, it's also important to make your shop name recognizable so that people know what's in there without having to look. Usually mentioning the item's name is enough if you're selling stacks of a specific item, but with more varied shops it's important to be able to fit as much information as possible in an understandable way. There exist many methods for this, such as abbreviations like greens and reds for set pieces in accordance to their rarity color, initials for unique weapon categories like H for historic, and using numbers like 80 plus to imply items level 80 and above. This can save a lot of space in the writing field and tell potential customers more about what your shop contains. You can absorb a lot of the terminology from other shopkeepers, so pay attention to their shop names and see if there's anything you can take advantage of yourself. And while we're on the topic of selling a variety of items, do also try to sell as many unique items as possible. Selling the same item on multiple slots is essentially a wasted opportunity to provide a customer with a different item that they could be interested in. There's no purpose in setting up two of the same suits for sale unless they sell like hotcakes, which isn't usually the case. You can just replace the suit with another once it's bought, while having the other item displayed along with it the entire time. You might eventually end up with so much money through merchanting that the amount you carry might become risky to hold as penny value can go down due to inflation. 
To reduce these risks, you can invest on some premium items instead, which prices will inflate along with Penia, thanks to the standard value of the premium currency, F coins. Anything that's bought with F coins is considered a premium item, and that includes upgrading scrolls, pickup pets, mounts, amps, and much more. There's two ways you can go about it, and that's either by buying premiums from other play shops usually for an extra cost, or buying F coins from players directly. As weird as buying F coins with Penia sounds, it is possible to do so by doing some bidding around the bush. People will usually shout that they're buying or selling them at a certain rate, typically for a certain amount of millions for 1000 F coins. How it works is that the person who is selling F coins will buy items from the premium shop with the amount the buyer requested, and then those items will be traded in exchange for the penny offered. You can then either decide to keep them as tangible valuables in your bank like gemstones, or try to sell them again at an increased profit margin for players. This is why buying from player shops is usually more expensive than from F coin vendors. Whether you want to give yourself extra work or not is completely up to you. That's pretty much all that comes into my mind about merchandising though, so thank you so much for watching. If you were left with any questions, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll respond to you as soon as I can. And if you found this information useful, don't hesitate to share it with others who could use this knowledge as well. And uh, join my community discord or something, I guess. We got Chiras and Chiraf lovers. I don't bite, I promise. But with that being said, that's all for now. Check out my other guides if you haven't already, maybe you like them too. But until next time, it's bye bye. Thank you.